Oh, hey, so you're back from Indianapolis, right? Yeah, we just got back. It's a 12-hour drive today, and I just got home. So what, what was it not Nationals? Is that what they called it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was not Nationals, uh, held by a really cool guy, good group of people. It was basically uh, more of a, not really a private event, but um, it wasn't, you know, inside a convention, you know, so it didn't have a big convention door fee. Parking was free, which is really cool. Yeah, it was, it was here who's not Nationals, and it was fun, you know, it was fun kind of like some area 51 like driving the tent dudes in you know you know military uniforms checking the temperature and like all right let's wave you through but they were like talking about D and stuff so it was pretty funny uh then we went in and we parked like i said free parking we just parked ourselves no big deal no door fee they were asking for donations though which is cool so so yeah no that was that was basically kind of how it was run mm. yeah, yeah donations and stuff it's pretty cool well, and then we got in you could do. pay uh so they did a normal like 300 constructed modern was sunday they did sealed on Saturday, and then okay, uh, it was cool. popper on uh, for the first day. So yeah, it is what it, it, popper. That sounds disgusting. You know what popper? Is that? No. Hey, yeah. Uh, so it's so it's commons and uncommons only, and oh then they also God. allow people play like that, like in the street. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, no, not no, not in the sh- in the street. No, this is still just like a normal Heroclix event. It's just it's really cheap and it's easy for new people to get into it, so they don't have to play with like chases and super rares, all this crazy expensive stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like um, I believe they call it like an everyman format in some different places. Oh, so basically, God. it just has a really low, you know, bar <laughs> bar of entry. Uh, Why would you- like okay. I mean, the whole point of Hero Clicks is to have like a high bar of entry. You want like that's whole, that's the whole reason why chases and super rares and stuff are better pieces is because you don't want just anybody playing. You don't want like, I I don't know if I would with call pocket lint and instead of dice. That sounds gross. Well, I I wouldn't go that far as to say, but it you know it does let everyone play the game and be able to afford to play a somewhat like competitive team, you know, for the, for the style, for the format. And, you know, it's, it's, it's fun and a lot of starters. So they don't have pocket lint, you know, they, they have the dice that come in the starters and stuff, at least, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's, it's really, it's not as bad as you're making it seem. It, it's certainly a fun format and people that play in whatever, uh, modern, you know, where chases and supers are allowed, they still play in popper and stuff, you know, it's no different. They should do a reverse of that like a prince format where it's only super rares and higher. So I don't have to deal with that kind of like rabble rousing crowd. Are you feeling, are you feeling all right, man? Is, uh, is something no, going just, on? Like I've realized okay. being a, a big man about town and now a formal inner circle member it's changed my opinion on this game. And I think, it, you know, if you if you let me sit you down and talk to you about it, you'd realize stuff like Popper is just a silly thing. It's not a direction we want the game to go in. We don't want an easy entry level. No children. No, no rabble rousers. Only premium players playing premium pieces. Well, Simeon, I'll... I'll take that chance right there to sit down with you and try to convince you different because I think Hero Clicks is, is for everyone. And I think the easier it is to for the everyman, the uh, average, ordinary, hardworking guy to get in and play a few games, even if they can't afford the most valuable pieces or the best pieces, some could say, they still uh, they can still in a comp- play in a com- competitive event without mm. costing them a pretty penny. Well, so I'll, I'll, I'll take that pennies, off. So... I, would, uh, I don't know, Calder. Uh, after you, I mean, I guess if you if you get a good spa day in between going to that popper event and sitting down with me, maybe I'll talk to you. But you definitely need to clean that dirt under your fingernails and whatever pocket lint and common figures you touched, so that doesn't pollute the air that I have around me. Simeon, you've insulted me. In a way that I didn't know I could be insulted. So I think we're going to have to sit down. And we're going to have to hash this out. On October 23rd. On the Dial H for Hero Clicks YouTube channel. For Extreme Rules. Sounds Hello and welcome to Dial H for Hero Clicks. Episode 333. 
I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host, Calderness. We're going to talk about the indie tournament. We're going to talk about a new generic gallery, the future keyword, cover a hidden gem and a value corner. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. Dial H for Hero Clips is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clips singles and sealed products. Make sure you guys check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Like always, we start off with what made us happy uh, this week. Simeon, why don't you start? Oh, you know, what makes me happy every day is uh, just breathing this nice, fresh air. Being who I am. You know, those kind of things. Okay, uh, well, I'm just going to go ahead and then uh, talk about my Indianapolis trip that I took this last weekend. So it, it was brought on uh, the the uh, Indiana National Guard, all done in this armory and everything. I kind of talked about it earlier. We drove down with a group of buddies and uh, we were able to play. It was three days of hero clicks. And I was hoping more people would have showed up for the event, the whole Not Nationals event. I think it should have had a bigger draw, and I was bummed that people weren't able to make it. I totally understand why a lot of people weren't able to make it. Um, so I get it. You know, first day was a Friday, so very, by all means, still part of the work week. And we played Popper. And I'm going to try to go through this because it was three days of events, and it was a great time uh, hanging out with figures. We know your feelings. I think you can be quiet for a little bit here. Let, let's get through this, huh, buddy? Uh it was great three days of events, and so I'll try to not make you know 45 minutes of the podcast about all this, but it was a lot of cool stuff that happened. So as far as Popper goes, when I was building for it, I just wanted to play uh, a cap squad. It had been a really long time since I had just let myself uh, play just a really nice, casual, fun game. I was doing all this practice, 300 modern, the soul-sucking 300 modern um, playing my chase and super rares figures and all this jazz, my primes for my stupid 300 modern team that I just, and, you know, there's no Captain America's on it. And it just, it hurt me a little bit. I trust me. I love soldiers. I love Josiah X. I love super scroll. I love 1776, but um, I wanted to just play cap squad. When I started the game, all I would do was like buy a bunch of Captain America figures, put them all on one team, whether they had synergy or not together, I played it. And that's my favorite way to play this game. So I played the Captain America and the Avengers set, uh, 018 Captain America, 85 points, living legend. You know, he's good. He's got the awesome leadership, but their values can't be modified if I get it on six. Uh, then I played 18B, the captain. Once again, another living legend. I copied quite a few different team abilities that day. Um, I kind of went with a static copying scrolls in some of the first games, but it never, I was never able to get the big six off. So then I decided to copy, um, what was a good one that I copied? It was Brotherhood. Brotherhood was really good in the team that I was able to copy it. Um, you can choose anyone, so it's not copying it from an opposing or anything. You can just choose it. But it just happened like this guy had a had onslaught, so it made me think of Brotherhood. And I'm like, you know what? I, if I roll some tens, that'd be great to take tokens off. You know, keep keep the captain going. I also copied uh, Doom TA one time. Didn't get any kills, but it was good to copy it. So instead of playing defensive, I played a little bit offensively based on who I was going against. Uh, next up, we had the Secret Wars Battle World common Captain America to make keep this an Avengers theme. And then we had the uncommon uh, on the side. Uh, he, it was mostly for the uncommon. Like, obviously, the common is can switch between close combat expert and then running shot 12 for three, which is just great. You know, really good offensive capabilities there. If the person is more close based i can just keep him in you know if i gotta play against like popper very popular for like juggernaut um wwe stuff so you know if it's close i want to keep you know that combat reflexes 18 combat reflexes captain america in it or i shift over to the uncommon he's got shape change he can block off a square for line of fire so if i put myself on an indoor map i can block off a hallway have the rest of my team behind him or i can also just give everybody a plus one uh, to defense which is good from range um, then I had the new Battlegrounds, Avengers vs. Masters of Evil, Captain America at 50 points. He has ESD toughness as a special defense power, and also part of that is a unique modifier, which he gives everybody, all adjacent friendly characters, plus one defense, just like period. So that would make most of these Captain Americas 20s and 21s from range combined with 
the uncommon Captain America. So defensively, it was a really good team. Uh, rounding it out, I had Happy Hogan, so we could carry up some people. And then I had Aim Red, so we had Empower Enhancement. He could also theme prob. Last five points, I had the WWE ring, which I used in some games, didn't use a lot in others. But I just really enjoyed Cap Squad. It had, you know, it's got two 12 attacks on the team. We've got theme props. We've got a lot of enhancement. We have a lot of precision strike, although no way to deal penetrating damage, which is a little rough. But basically, uh, I ended up going uh, three and one in Swiss. Made it, they, they only had like 12, over 14 people, I believe. So they cut to top four. So I made the cut to top four. And then I lost against um, PJ Bullen, who I lost to in Swiss. Uh, so that was, you know, kind of maybe hoping the dice would go my way the second game, you know, see if we could pull out a W. But we weren't able to. And that's all right. So I ended up getting fourth place, which was okay. Uh, I believe I ended in fourth. I don't think I got enough points to be third. But basically, first two games, I played against the Ott brothers, uh, identical twins, cool guys, Andrew and Ben. Um, they didn't want their names out there. Sorry, bros. But they played a really cool team. They both played 300 Juggernaut. So that was really tough going into the tournament. First two games playing against 300 point juggernaut. Thank goodness, though, that's like why you bring a theme team is um, you can take them to a map with no blocking. Like that was huge. So the only map I had written down with no blocking was settle it on the canvas, which is fine. I'm pretty sure that has pretty much no blocking on it. I don't remember, but we were able to, with Captain America, make a lot of attacks. I honestly forgot to roll for the assembled Avengers trait on the uncommon 018 Captain America. And see me by all means, feel free to interrupt me uh, when anything happens. Otherwise, I'm just going to kind of keep rambling like this for Indianapolis because there's just a lot to talk about. No, sorry. I, um, was, uh, I was watching the NASDAQ right now because uh, oh, you're talking oh, okay. about cheap formats and I'd rather be looking at my stocks on on the stock thing. Okay. No, that's no, that's cool. I, I can I can one man podcast for a bit. Uh, that's fine. Uh, so yeah, I played against both juggernauts. Uh, was able to beat him. I think the biggest thing about that, and the reason I was able to do it, was he's got no rollouts. If he misses his first hit, like I said, I'm protected a lot from range. Um, but he can get really good, and he's 13 attack. I got to use my theme probs. It's all about making sure that first attack doesn't hit, and then you know he. Both both of the times, I think the first time I was able to get out unscathed. The second time, though, uh, he did kill, I believe, a Captain America and probably Happy, maybe even Aim Red too. So, like, I lost I lost some people the second go around, uh, but that was all right. So I was up two Ws, which was cool. Three hundred sweeps, both of them, uh, because obviously full point juggernaut. Then I played against PJ Bullen, you know, critical clicks flame, uh, flame, fame, that guy. So oh, he was playing a Doctor Doom. Uh, PJ Bowen, really cool guy. He played uh, a <laughs> scientist version of, yeah, yeah, scientist version of Latveria. I was thinking of building a Latveria team, but I realized I'd have to borrow pretty much everything for it because I don't own them. So he played, uh, was, let me think here, Starter Doom at 100. The, I don't know if he paid 45 or 95 for him, but it was the Uncommon Doom from the new Fa Fantastic Four set with the plus five, why do all your Doom bots look like you again trait? Um, with the two Doom bots, and then he played Valeria, and then what's the kid's name? Alex Wilder. Uh, if there's anything else on the team, I forget to be honest with you. Not nah, Clairfin. That's what it was. Clairfin. So really good mobility, obviously with the Affit Pog, and then really good uh, ability to soak up damage with the stop clicks, the ability to heal when they get kills, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It was it was tough for me to score points the first time. <laughs> Um, and the second time, uh, it was just almost a complete shutout. I got 95 points the first time. I believe I killed all the low stuff, like Alex Wilder, Clearfin, a couple of Doom bots, maybe Valeria, something like that. Whatever would have gotten me 95. That's what I got last time. And then I played against uh, Lucas Van Holland, supporter of the show. Awesome dude. Uh, drove us down and everything. So that was really fun. I uh, love road tripping with these guys. We actually practiced the night before, and he like slaughtered my team. He was playing Onslaught. He had Danger Room Magneto, Danger Room Sabretooth, which I got to say, not a fan of those being in Popper. This is like me unironically saying this, like, hey, Chris, man, the the figures, the fact that those are allowed in Popper is, I think, ridiculous. And it's okay for people to disagree with me. That's fine. It's because they're not but, prime. Like, they're yeah, not I know they're prime, not. Even though they take a, a prime are, Yeah. 
they're prime rarity, so they're still expensive. And the whole part of Popper is being cheap to get like into it. Not that I'm saying like you know WWE is obviously allowed, and those are eight dollars a figure. You know, the wrestling ring on my team cost thirty five bucks. You know, but and then you got four other figures with it. Like I'm just saying, the the danger room constructs bother me the most because they're prime rarity technically just because they don't have a green ring. Like, I think that's ridiculous. I don't think they should be allowed. I, I think they are, are a little too strong a popper, even though I won this game. I think it was more based on luck that I won against Lucas to be completely honest with you, because it was really like an even game. You know, we didn't get a lot of kills right away. I think like 20, 30 minutes went by without anything dying you know, because I would living legend or he had like saber tooth, you know, taking very small amounts of damage. But eventually it came a time where onslaught was in and he made a lot of my controls, but I don't know if they were all as effective as they could have been. He also had Mary Jane on the team um, and a few other stuff, but there was a time where I was able to kill onslaught in a turn. I killed Magneto the turn before then I was able to very luckily might I add, uh, take out onslaught, you know, misshape change. I got him off of that, dealt him like four damage, so he took two off of invulnerability. And then I running shot with one Captain America, made sure I had an enhancement and an empower on both of them with aim red. And I was able to actually crit hit, so we got no senses. And I don't remember if it was the extra damage that I, I totally needed to kill him. I'm pretty sure it was. Otherwise, he would have been on the last click. I think one, two actions. I would have had another action to take another shot. Um, so. And obviously, he rerolled the first attack, so the, the crit hit on the second one stuck. Um, so yeah, so I think that was very lucky to crit hit onslaught, which is good. I did roll some crit misses in that game. I think I don't know if a game went by in Popper where I didn't roll a crit miss. My dice stayed pretty even. Um, I would say that day I, I used the Captain America dice I got from the clicks and it gave it away. It was Cap Squad. Had to use the Cap dice. It was Cap Squad. Sorry, Simi. I love the dice, but uh, mm. Cap Squad got to roll a Cap dice. You know how mm. it is. You know how it is. Um, so, and then that was that was it. And then top four, we cut back to uh, me and PJ Bowen. It went way worse this time. He hit his alpha, not really alpha, but hit the opening attack that he needed. Still one map, which was probably the roughest. Um, I definitely want a more enclosed map against Doom since he outranges me. He has a TK. It's just, it would be a lot better if I could have uh, put him on a more hidden indoor map, you know, uh, Ancient Hold or something. So that was the popper event. I probably talked about that for way too long. Uh, so let's talk about an event that I did well in. So really quickly, congrats to PJ for winning that. I believe it was him and Joe, Joseph who, uh, that made, Josepha, sorry, goodness gracious, uh, that made top two. I hope I said it right. I, I we, we hung out with him the whole weekend, but we always just called him Joe. So, and this is like the first time meeting him. So, you know. J-O-S-A-F-A. J-O-S-A-F-A. Like Josepha. So Josepha, I believe. I don't Josepha. Know. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Um, but he was a really cool guy. He was he was a super cool dude. We had a really good, you know, a couple of really good conversations with him. So I loved Cap Squad, and I was just more happy that it also did really well. Um, and that yeah, I would say for anyone that's looking to go try a few popper tournaments, they're a little weary, weary of it or whatever. Dude, just do it. Just play popper. Bring just bring a fun team of whatever you want, and just give it your give it your all. Like just. Give it your best shot because I, I built a solid team. You know, Captain America was basically just like a team I would play casually. You know, it's all cap squad. Yeah, it's good enough from range. It's got some cool tricks, but uh, it did well in popper. So I definitely want to just recommend play. I think popper is a really fun format. So if you want to play all wrestlers, if you want to play all whatever, you can still have a really good shot at winning. Uh, even if you aren't playing the crazy, you know, onslaught Nimrod, whatever meta that there is in popper. You know what I'm saying? And if Nimrod's not meta and popper, then please, by all means, excuse me. Uh, I didn't see him play that day, but anyways, that was popper. That was the day. And then Sounds second day, awful. we, um, thanks for your opinion. And then the second day we played sealed. Uh, Hey man, you're going to give it to me. I'm going to throw it right back at you. Sealed was rough. Uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of the details, but because of a few things that happened at the event, we had to play one booster of Spider-Man, and then one booster of X-Men, which is why my SEAL team was a little weird. I think that worked out very well in your favor, though. Uh, absolutely. So I I don't always have the best luck in SEAL. I played a ton of Captain America SEALs earlier this year, and I only won one of them. And even then, I never once pulled a chase, and I only ever pulled one super rare. So 
I have I didn't have great luck earlier this year in sealed, so I think I was bound to have some good luck. I was able to get Onslaught from my X-Men booster, and oddly enough, I actually also pulled the super rare Cassandra Nova, so by all means, a solid X-Men booster. Um, nothing too cheap, no guard command, no friend of humanity, so nothing to fill out points. And then for Spider-Man, um, I don't know what my fourth or fifth thing was that I pulled in the spot. Oh, it was uh, Deathlock. But I ended up using most of my Spider-Man booster, which was the 001 Spider-Man on the main force, the trash can Spidey on main force, and the common or uncommon Agent Venom on main force. And then I had Peter Parker on my sideline, so that way trash can Spidey could revert to him when he died. Uh, and then obviously Onslaught, Onslaught. You know, I I decided, yeah, let's get rid of a Spider-Man family theme team because there's no way for me to make one um, because Onslaught is just that good. I did uh I did really well. I don't have my build sheet in front of me. I do remember I went. Three and one in Swiss. I played against this dude named Keith right away. He had a real hodgepodge, bunch of random stuff. He had Sabretooth, Danger Room. Um, he had Proteus, 20 point line, Orange Puff Proteus. He had this black cat on the team where you couldn't reroll uh, if you were within four of her. And the attack had ones and twos. And that, that worked for both of us, you know, but he didn't have any problem on his team. He had Hobgoblin. He had the Miles Morales. Um, uncommon, I think, 50 points outwit, some sidestep, passenger carry, stuff like that. So that was a really rough game. It was just there was a lot of stuff to attack. And because it was all kind of spread out and they all sort of had rollouts, it was I wasn't able to like get one shot kills off, you know, all the time or even, you know, two shots in a turn just because of how much stuff there was to to have to go through. So like if like sure he'll run up with Sabretooth, try to base you, which is awful. That was I think that was my mistake in the first game was I worried about Sabretooth. And if you don't hit every single attack in just one turn, get rid of Sabretooth, like and then you can worry about everything else. Something. Yeah, yeah. Wrong. He's got Battle Fury, so it's like no shape change for Onslaught, which is really rough. But the, the biggest thing is that I wasn't able to one turn him, right? Which is just, which is really terrible. So I had to, had to deal with that. And then I lost that game. Uh, next couple of games, I don't fully remember. So I'll just say. Let's talk about my top four as far as Steel goes. The next three I won. I know I played against uh, Mr. Tommy Lytle. Um, that game was purely, and I mean purely, dice. He failed to roll a seven more times than I can count. And I never felt so bad um, about probbing a guy's like 10 attack roll to roll it into a five or a six than I felt against Tommy. I was like, dude, your dice have abandoned you. And I get it. Like, it is a dice game. So, like, when I have bad luck, I'm like, ah, it's, I have to roll dice. It's just the way it is. But I, I felt like a scumbag for just how bad his dice were rolling. And I was like, dang, this is so rough. Um, Actually, sorry. Let's go into like sort of how my team worked a little bit. I don't want to go too much into Onslaught. He can free mind control TK. He has prob. He has shape change. And if he cap. hits with a close attack. Yeah, and in cap. You're right. He can also do that for free. Um, he has triple bolt. He has nine range. He can't be shot unless you're within four squares of him. So if you're five squares or more away, you can't shoot Onslaught. Or draw a line of fire to him. Trash can Spidey. He's 60 points. He is hypersonic. He has three damage without wit. He's a 12 attack, no range, which is I think balances him a lot. Um, 12 attack with his power where when he does a close attack, he can target everyone. And based on how targeting works, he can target everybody and then deal damage, right? Choose how you want to divide damage, which is awesome. So, and obviously all the spider people are wild cards, which is huge. And even if you kill that Spider-Man at 60 points, you instead just KO the trash can which is only 10 points and you bring in Peter Parker on click two. So like they're going to do all that work to get through this dude's 18 senses. And then he goes on a combat reflexes and stuff. Right. And he has some ESD mixed in there. Like they do this, all this work to KO a six, six click character, 60 point figure. And then it's like, you get 10 points for the trash can. And then Peter Parker comes out and I kind of keep him in the back, let him prob whatever. Right. Like it's so it's some point denial there. Onslaught's pretty difficult to take out. Then the 40-point Spider-Man's got senses traded. I just used him to carry up trash can Spidey. Um, and then I would sometimes TK him up so we, I could precision strike close combat expert a lot of stuff. So that was very helpful. Um, then Agent Venom, uh, he can free move at the beginning of the turn. You roll D6 to see if he can move or not. He has stealth. He has shape change. He has invulnerability. He's got plasticity. He's got range combat expert. He's a 10 for 3. So... There was just a lot of survivability to my team and a lot of good offense to my team too, which was huge. So that's kind of how my team worked. 
First game, I believe he cuts top eight. There are about 18 people playing. First game I played against... Sorry, man, I forgot your name. I feel bad, but he had this full point Magneto. We played against him twice. And the first game, double perplexed that Magneto's defense. This is how it went for the second game, too. Uh, except he won math the second game. So he double perplexed that Magneto's defense. And I was like, well, he can just mutant Messiah, whatever damage I give to him, to uh, Scanner or Amelia Vote, whoever it was. So I was like, I'm going to TK up Spidey. I'm going to outwit his defense power. I'll double target. And this is like, by the way, if I didn't have Spider-Man's crazy attack power where I could target two people with a close, this wouldn't work at all. So I can target two people with a close. And since they were both targets of that attack, he wouldn't be able to mastermind it because it's if they would otherwise not be hit by the attack, which means he can't use mastermind. So then I would just deal the three to Magneto since he couldn't mastermind it, which was huge. Then Spidey would hypersonic back. You know what I'm saying? So um, I just needed a big eight each time. Had to roll it twice. He had no prob. And uh, I got it. I got it each time. And that was huge. So yeah, like that was definitely the big like Hail Mary shot against that game. Because otherwise Magneto running shot, pen bla- or pulse wave, which is just bad news bears for Onslaught and the gang. So um, and there was a lot of different cool things. So, like because of wild card, I could give them all brotherhood so they could take tokens off themselves and their roll tens are higher, which would keep me my momentum going. Or if Onslaught took damage, I just have Agent Venom copy X-Men. He can move, you know, free move back or the other Spider-Man who can sidestep back, copy X-Men. Then they can just heal up Onslaught, get them back to the 18 with shape change, cool prod power, which was also super helpful. Like the team had a lot of synergy from being from two different sets, um, which was huge. So I was able to win that game. The next game I played was actually against an old teammate of Simeon, and it was Charles. And Charles had Stealth Sentinel, and I was really worried about this matchup. He had Stealth Sentinel, he had Doppelganger. Was he playing at right? 200? I believe so. Yeah. So that's a hard point Stealth That's Sentinel. a hard fight, even if you're like fully built for it, because that defensive mode is just so hard to crack. And that offensive mode that they can start off with is super potent. So they can start off with offense, make the first attack, switch to yeah. defense, and then just mostly stay on defense until your whole team has like two action tokens and then switch back to offense for a turn. Right. So that was huge. Not being able to range him with Agent Venom. Agent Venom can shoot while based and he can ignore hindering and elevated for movement. But it's really rough that he couldn't see through hindering the whole day. So it, it made the amount of attacks I could make against Stealth Sentinel purely the Spider-Man hypersonic close and then the onslaught attacks, you know, because we could not see through stealth otherwise. And I could not win him with Spider-Man either, because obviously he was in stealth. So it was it was a very difficult matchup. It was a matchup I was worried about the whole time, especially seeing it, but also Charles is just a cool guy, and I really wanted to play against him that day because we were we were giving each other, you know, some some smack talk back and forth as you do at HeroClix events. It was just fun, and I was just really excited we got to play each other. And he was honestly like, "Oh, you won your game?" And I'm like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Oh, dude, sick! We get to play." Like, I was I've never had to play against Charles, even though we played against your their team twice. Like, we played against them once in Worlds, and then when you were on their team at Nationals, we played against you guys. Oh yeah, that's right. But I, I never got to play against. Yeah, I never got to play against Charles. So. I don't think I played against Sean either. So like it's it's cool that I was able to play against Charles. Um the first turn I was 100% like we got to get Doppelganger out of here. Battle Fury Precision Strike is not 100% not good for this team. So we did an onslaught pew 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 shoot and then we did an onslaught TK and we got rid of him luckily. We got rid of him one turn. Um we could have easily botched both those rolls and then wasted a prob you know what i'm saying so like we got very lucky to get rid of him in one turn and then it was like you know hope we survive the next round um damage from stealth sentinel you know uh, i did send up spider-man i can't remember if he hit him right away or not off the 20 senses but uh, eventually the next round he obviously had a switch to go to attack mode he he hit the attack against Onslaught. Luckily, Onslaught reduces penetrating, which is once again huge. You know, like how awesome is that? That that was built and just worked, you know, a year later after he came out for me. So that's cool. So Onslaught reduced penetrating, which was just awesome. I healed him up uh, with the sidestep Spider-Man. I was always like, gosh, I 
toss him up there, get him to, you know, you know, he's got precision strikes, he's got close combat expert. He'd be a 13 for two just to get like a really solid crack on it. But I was like, no, I want to make an attack using onslaught with the TK. So yeah, uh, we were able to heal up using X-Men, which is a solid strat. And then uh, we were able to whittle down the stealth Sentinel. We were able to kill his Peter Parker. Um, we did it with Agent Venom. He was like, dude, Agent Venom hasn't done anything this whole game, mostly because of like the stealth and just the way everything has been going. So I made sure after we whittled down and got rid of Stealth Sentinel, you know, we were like kind of gentleman's agreement here. We're going to have Agent Venom take that last shot on Spider-Man when uh, when Peter turned into Spider-Man. So it was pretty cool. Um, people might be uh, missing this, and I realize I've been talking about my team for a while. So before I go into my final game, yes, I made sure they all knew that they got a Jonah Jameson. And yes, I said, you can place him anywhere on the map. And no, they they never put them right up next to me to try to get rid of the trash can right away. Uh, I think mostly because if they if they did, I was always going to hide the trash can behind somebody. You know, if uh, if like I was not going first, so like they wouldn't have been able to get to the trash can anyways. I have four people. I can make a little person wall of the trash can. But I did see a really cool thing that happened. So like, if someone's playing trash can Spidey and they give you J Jonah Jameson. He has 10 range, a nine attack. He can pick up a light object and throw it at someone. Like, that's pretty cool. I was pretty like, oh, I didn't totally not did not see that coming. J. Jordan Jason just threw a trash strong. can. 10 squares. Yeah. I was like, that's awesome. So don't be, don't be like, oh, I'm just gonna put him, you know, in my starting area. You don't have to, you know, put him in your starting area. He starts the game anywhere on the map. Feel free to place him wherever where you don't think he's gonna get shot, you know, right away. But still, you can save yourself some moves and some sidesteps. And, you know, having a five speed move and then sidestep and then autonomous makes him somewhat mobile for just a little pog. So don't count out uh, Jay Jonah. Anyways, to go into the last game here, probably that was something I should have covered right away. The last game was once again against Keith. And I was like, man, this is actually going to be pretty rough. Because I was I was worried about it because I lost to him in Swiss. You know, I was. I was worried about, you know, like, oh, this is, I'm so close to getting uh, a sweet victory this weekend. I don't want to mess it up. So, and it, the game went to time and it was rough. I decided to outwit the charge on Sabretooth when he moved up. You know, I'm like, I don't want to deal with Sabretooth at all. I knew that was my downfall last time. So let's not focus on it. I was like, instead, let's try to do some all team mind controls. First time I did it, none of the mind controls were useful. They never hit any other person, right? So that sucked. Um, but you know, it still kept the retail off me for a little bit. Uh, it, it was, it was just a rough team. It had a lot going on and it felt, you know, it, it kind of was just like, it also has no synergy. Um, but there was just so much to deal with. So I made sure I got rid of hobgoblin right away. That was huge. The sin. So he basically, every time you hit someone, he gives you a sin token and you can't use shape change when you have that sin token. Um, which is, guess what? Not good for Onslaught and Agent Venom. So I wanted to make sure we killed him right away so we get rid of our Sin Tokens. Um, and then after that, it, it was a really close game. Uh, trash Can Spidey never died. Um, Agent Venom did die right away. So it was just kind of this thing of keeping Onslaught alive, KOing the right people, trying to stay away from Sabretooth, you know. Um, and, if, and if he's going to hit anybody, make sure it's the normal Spider-Man. So like, he has reflexes and super senses at the very least. He can only be out one damage at a time because of saber two straight, you know, and it, and I hate playing like a retreat keep away type deal, but there's a point in the game where like onslaught had taken three damage. And I was like, let's, let's move him back. Let's heal him up with X-Men and then let's have him move over here and then make sure he's far enough away from everybody else where they, they can't charge to hit him and then heal him again with X-Men, even though he was out in the open, just keep him far away from other people. Like, not necessarily running away and keeping away, but then playing tactfully against like not being able to just let him get attacks off more so than just like, oh, I'm going to run over here and heal, 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 heal and not do anything, which is lame. Instead, it's just tactfully move around the map. And with Onslaught, you can do that because of the free um, ability to mind control TK in cap, right? Like Onslaught, you can do that because he can move as a cost and then still be offensive while being careful, you know? Yeah, he's super mobile. Uh, and then that game... Especially with that yeah. Brotherhood, and I know it was sealed, so it wasn't possible to have that combo, but um, 
Kevin ran Onslaught with Dr. Claire Finn, so the Yafit Pog gave him sidestep. And being able to have Onslaught, who's a colossal, just like sidestep away from characters really Yeah. Just like helps it's out big. a lot. He like he's already super mobile and then like you can't lock him down even with these with his, when he's got two action tokens. It makes him impossible to deal with. Oh, yeah. And I didn't colossal push a lot that day, but whenever I felt comfortable to do it and be able to heal with X-Men, I would do it. Absolutely. So that that ended up being um, I ended up winning. It went to time. He made, you know, a pretty good last attack. I didn't hit senses on it, but it did take me to my last click on trash can Spidey. I don't know if that would have made the difference in points. It, it would have only put him at 125 since he didn't kill. I don't believe anyways. I don't think he killed Peter and he didn't kill the 40 point Spider-Man and he obviously he didn't kill Onslaught. So I don't think it would have put him over on points, but it was just also just a solid like, and he was the only person to eventually get all the way to my starting area, not with Jay Jonah, but with somebody else and grab the trash can and then just chuck it at someone just to make sure I couldn't KO the trash can myself and be able to come in as Spidey, you know, which was good move, hundred percent good move. Um, because doing all that work to kill Spider-Man only get 10 points to drop. So I was able to take home the win. I got another Galactus, which was cool. So I now, this brings up my Galactuses too, which is awesome. And I got a really sweet trophy. It's this really slick uh, eagle. And you guys know I'm patriotic, so I, I really, really dug it. It's 2020 HeroClick SEAL Champion, Indiana, Army National Guard, Minuteman Nationals, which was kind of the pseudo name for not nationals was Minuteman Nationals, which is really cool. So I really, really dig it. It's the only time I've ever gotten a statue for Heroclix. And I, I love it. I think it's awesome. This is like for sure going on my shelf with the rest of my Colossals and everything. We need more like tournaments where we get statues. Like as a kid growing up, I got statues for like 4-H and you know, you get like medals for like wrestling or like whatever else. But like Statues for hero clicks, way cooler. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, mom and dad. Statues for hero clicks are just way cooler. So like, I really dig it, you know. Um, and I was wearing my uh, my latest T-shirt. If you guys saw it on Facebook and Twitter, my my Smexy Ranch Hand shirt, which is a Flork of Cows drawing of me, uh, which is uh, which is really cool. If you don't know who Flork of Cows is, uh, some of his stuff for for younger people might scare them he does some kind of gore comics occasionally but most of the time it's just really dumb humor which i heavily enjoy so that is that was sealed um and then we can go ahead and move on to 300 construct uh the day we got to nationals kind of or not nationals uh changed what my team was going to be so i like super scrolls uh me me and chad had talked about it a little bit and then i built a team with like what it would be like with Spider-Man before Spider-Man was released. And then I saw Chad play them in Ohio. Um, and his first variation of his team didn't have Josiah X. And I didn't know, he never talked to me about putting it on his team. And then I had built a team before Spider-Man had come out. And I was like, we got to have Josiah X, three Super Scrolls, 1776, blah, blah, whatever else. And then I was like, oh, dude, sick. He also was like, let's do Josiah X. He subbed out a few other things. And then I practiced Super Scrolls a bunch. And then in States... I wasn't able to win with them. And I was like, there's got to be something that's not quite right. And it was just slow with Super Scrolls. I was doing Specs. I was doing Soul Gem. I also had like Remaker Ring. I had the like Stark Tower bonus for Josiah to bring in something so he wasn't just sitting there being useless. And just the team felt slow because the reach, you know, if I, if I can choose one or the other, defense or reach. That was it for Super Scrolls. You can either be defensive or you can have really good reach. And even defensive gave you an eight square swing because of the charge and the um, the giant reach, which was cool. Or you could have, oh, let's see, sidestep, six, eight, plus four, or 10 square sw swing, right, with just toughness and shape change. So having to choose one or the other, I didn't like. So I decided to be like, let's do, and I saw another dude in rock. So I'm not going to like take full credit for like how this team was built. But um, the day of states, I was like, I saw some dude play Super Scrolls with, um, not Super Scrolls, he played a Super Scroll, two 76s, and had Captain Marvel on the team. And I was like, I still definitely want two Super Scrolls. I don't think I should just put one on the team. So for states, I was going to do two Super Scrolls, 
1776 at 50, then Captain Marvel, and then maybe a ring, right? And then when we got here, I won Galactus. And I was like, I want to play Galactus. We found out the day we got there that we could play him. And we were like, oh, dang, we did not build teams for potential to use Galactus or thinking we would have to play against the Galactus. Normally, a viable figure like this, it takes a month to get them modern. But this was a week, like how a set is, which is not normally how they do it, which is really weird, but it appeared on the wins. So that's just the way it was. And we were unprepared for it. But since I won one, I'm like, well, I totally want to play with Galactus. So we did Captain Marvel, made her a herald. We did two Super Scrolls at 50. Then we did uh, 1776 at 50. And then Mary Jane and Marvella, both 15 points, which made me an even 300. And I liked it. So this is no, besides Galactus, this was, um, this would not have triggered if there was any like, voyagers or astronomers there's no special terrain there's no objects there's no map bonuses and i don't know if galactus was part of their trade or not with like the way it is but i don't think it would have triggered that and if i'm wrong i'm wrong um but we did have trouble alerts i don't know if those are mentioned in the trade or not but i did have a full an almost full thing of trouble alerts and i did forget to have a alter ego slash secret identity for mary jane so going in first game 300 modern constructed i did i played against this dude playing a sort of symbiote team had absolute carnage it had carrion it had harry osborne shriek prime and no just shriek and then scream prime um, that was actually a really close game because of the battle fury and flurry carnage and then the pulse wave on shriek he was able to one turn some scrolls which was not good feeling um but captain marvel played how i thought she was going to play and how i wanted her to play on the team um, the big thing with scrolls is that I don't like Tri Sentinel. I would like to delete him as soon as possible, you know, and then also drop Chewy uh, for any other potential stuff. Same thing. If I don't like your one click figures, I want to delete them pretty much. Like that was the point of Captain Marvel, mostly. She's also, um, this is also a very heavy defense team, right? Captain Marvel's got two stop clicks. You know, she has no rollouts, which technically makes her, besides the Mary Janes, makes her the easiest thing to KO on the team, oddly enough. Besides, you know, triple rollout with Super Scroll and then one rollout slash kind of two rollouts since he can copy scrolls 1776. And he also has a stop click. So the team is also sort of not really pseudo don't die tech. But like I said, not really because it's no like it's no danger room, but it is not, you know, you can't one shot any figure unless you pulse wave a Super Scroll. Like, I think with that's the only way all to do the it. pieces in place, like on the offset, like not being able to ping damage super scrolls and them having at least two rollouts almost every single turn and one of those rollouts is a 50-50. It's not really don't die tech, but it's very it's like a mix between don't die and just like impossible to hit without a ton of outwit stuff. Yeah. Well, on this team, it is missing Josiah, so you can ping the Super Scrolls, but it didn't come up a ton. Uh, but yeah, the first game, uh, the guy was kind of new, and I felt a little bad, but it was actually a close game. All my games went to time today. Um, this team is not the craziest, most offensive thing in the world. It's not going to shut any team out. Um, so I won that game. Next up, I won against Doug. Um, Doug is a cool dude. I don't know if he was on Phoenix Nest or not, but he was always with Tommy. They like drove down together. Um, and if he's not on Phoenix Nest, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. A lot of so people I was, he was just crazy his, cool. His armies. There's a lot of HC Realm comments about Doug's army. Oh right, 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 right. This is a different Doug. Oh. This is there's no there's no H. It's just D O U G. So just normal Doug, like Doug's life, or like the show, just Doug, whatever that show was called. Yeah, uh, but no, he wasn't Doug's green. Life. He didn't have a bully that was blue and had a weird dog. So. No, this is like just normal. I would call him normal Doug. But Doug was cool, dude. Like we hung out in the hotel room, went to like a place to go out to eat after some of the days. Like Doug was a cool guy. So he was playing, what was it? Spider-Man Family Robots. I, I would say I screwed up a barrier less so than messing up dice. So I this is kind of what happened. I, met, I doubled up on all of my barriers except for one square. He was able to perplex up Tri Sentinel speed, destroy the barrier, and it still left that one square of opening. Then he was able to TK up his Magneto, running shot pulse wave the entire team, which is 
pretty rough. Not going to lie, pretty rough. And then I was like, okay, well, I can still try to one turn Magneto and then get rid of Tri Sentinel. So, first of all, let's get rid of Tri Sentinel. Uh, went for it. We missed, we probed, we hit. And then I was like, okay, paparazzi time. Let's in cap Magneto. He's got two tokens, deal the one damage, right? Crit miss, whatever. It's a paparazzi. Sure, I don't get a brain of trouble alert. Fine, he kills himself. No big deal. Second paparazzi. All right, let's go ahead. Ping damage Magneto, in cap, and crit miss all right a little weird but okay whatever paparazzi once again don't really care too much we can make more next up super scroll big close combat expert you know 13 or you know, 12 well, actually it would be a 12 for two doesn't matter he's only gonna take one. Oh, let's go ahead let's punch him third crit miss in a row i'm like okay a little interesting this time i do get to bring out vulture or black vulcan so that's fine so we finally got the ping damage off um and that kind of slowed down my team. I wasn't really like mad about it just because like it is a dice game. Bad luck happens. I think what put me in that position was not putting a barrier up. So it was more of a tact error, like a tactical error, more so than just like, oh man, rabble, 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 my dice. You know, I always find blaming dice is just like, man, who cares? It'd be like that sometimes. It's like, like that's all you can really say to yourself. Like you're gonna blame some pieces of plastic. Mm, nah. That's just, I just, I'm not about that life. So we brought in Vulcan. He pinged him. You know, it was, it, it let Magneto live another turn. He was able to take out a few more people his next turn. Then I, you know, killed Magneto finally. Um, and that was just way down on points. Uh, we went up, we took out his Amazo, and time was called. And he just, he had more points. I don't think we got wiped. I'm pretty sure time was called, but like, I don't think there was me. There's, there's not a chance of me winning that game either. Uh, just with the way the points worked out and uh, with what was dead. I think it was just Captain Marvel on her last click and then a super scroll. Um, just so you guys know, yeah, playing Galactus gives Captain Marvel power cosmic and all this stuff. The elemental converter dial has not done any damage yet throughout these games. So next game I played against Ian who I lost to in states, as you guys will know, the famous uh, made a paparazzi. He ate her and then, you know, vultured, did vulture things. And then it was downhill from there. This time I uh, moved up. We put him on hedge maze and we barriered up, played very safe. And then I was like, ah, oh, man, he, he was able to triple perplex up, try sentinel speed. He went up, did the whole retail thing, which I still think we got to fix that with kids. We talked last time about how much we need to fix that. I won't go into it pinged everybody for one which is rough and then i was able to take out tri sentinel next turn and then it was a really weird game after that i was kind of on the defense a lot i was really i think the one thing this team is missing is a way to heal more than anything it's a way to heal if 1776 had like support like battlefield medic i would, this team would be a thousand times better because getting super scrolls back on a shape change is huge getting uh Captain Marvel back on the hypersonic is huge. Like that, those are some linchpin things that really suck. So just kind of made me wonder about this team a little bit. Um, like how a way to heal. I never once missed an ID card until I was like, man, I could just call in Wolverine and just heal anybody, heal everybody one <laughs> click. Like, right. man, that was the only time I've ever missed an ID card back ever in, in my life. Days. I was like, dude, if I could just, yeah, if I could just call in Wolverine back in those days, you mean back in like February? Okay. Yes. Okay, Zimian. Prior to rotation. <laughs> yeah. Those days. In the good old days, not really, but but still, this was the first time I'd ever missed an ID card. And I'll just get to the point. It honestly came down to like a slog fest. He missed a lot of attacks with Vulture when he finally decided to go and Vulture up. He missed so many attacks, so much so that he brought in two Vulcans. Then I made attacks, missed attacks, brought in my own Black Vulcan, and we had some crazy Black Vulcan on Vulcan action. I was able to kill his Black Vulcans, bring in Chewie, uh, perplex Chewie up, flurry, roll the blades I needed to to kill Vulture. He even brought in a Firestorm prior to that. Um, it was pretty wild, I'm not going to lie. And eventually it came down to points. He got 100 points for killing a Super Scroll in 1776, and I think I got like 130. It was, you know, it was Vulture valeria and then two um black vulcans and I, no 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 Duh. it was not valeria it was tri -Sentinel. that's what it was sorry so like once again not a game that i swept but it was a game that i stayed alive long enough i mean to just barely just barely 
get more points. Um, so that was just a wild game where there was three va- black Vulcans on the field at a time and a, uh, and a firestorm. So it was, that was crazy cool. Next up, uh, last game Swiss, I played against uh, Isaac Denke, who is a regular in South Dakota. And once again, it was kind of a, it was robots, Spider-Man family. He went up with Cyclops Sentinel to try to hit my whole team. And it kind of sucked. He put me on hedge maze. There's no indoor blocking. So I didn't have a good way to defend against it like at all. He moved up Cyclops Sentinel. He got like a 14 attack because of Penny. And he's like, well, I'm going to shoot 1776 and let's go for it. He's like, right. He's the softest target, right? Pretty much. And shot and I made senses. So that way everybody, no one took a bit ping damage. 76 didn't die in one turn. Like that was the luckiest thing. Then I moved up, got rid of Tri Sentinel. No, I didn't. Sorry. Moved up, uh, got rid of one turned Cyclops Sentinel with Captain Marvel. Then he pulse waved all of those guys with Magneto. And then he retaled with Cyclops, or sorry, with Tri Sentinel to get to once again pulse wave. And with Magneto, he moved them to blocking. So that way when he did that, he could deal them one. So that was very good tactfully. This was the first time the Elements Converter came into place. I was able to deal one damage to Magneto, which was helpful. Then I. Got rid of Tri Sentinel. Then he moves up a Mezo and those guys. I one turn Magneto. You know, the cat is crazy useful. And then I was able to get rid of a Mezo eventually. And then Cat to Marvel's on running shot Pensai. I was able to get rid of uh, Penny. Then the game was over. Call time. That was definitely a very lucky thing. I made super senses. Otherwise, the game would have been completely different. And this was also the first time the elements converter was useful where it dealt someone damage. Next game, top eight game. Played against Kevin. Kevin was awesome. Played the same uh, Hulk team he played at States. And I was like, you know what? I didn't beat him last time in Swiss. Let's see how well this version of the team can do against Kevin. Um, I think it was good. I I did plan out my turn really long for one turn. I just had enough. I had to run out Captain Marvel, her full 10 squares, and use her four range at hypersonic to get the shot at, at Tri-Sentinel, who he perplexed up, so from range, she's a 21. So I need a nine, right? So I perplex her attack value to a 13. Okay, I need an eight. I count it out again. Like, okay, yes, that's where she can go. I put a token there. Then I'm like, okay, I need to make sure I have a barrier in front of her. So I need to make sure I move a super scroll first. This is also the huge thing about this team is the free barrier with super scroll, the barrier with Marvella. Crazy huge. So then I move up super scroll, put a barrier down. Doesn't matter because we're, we're outside so I can see with it right with captain marvel move up he carries 1776 i'll be able to have two theme probs on it plus her normal prob so i have pretty good shot at rolling an eight you know what i'm saying we're able to kill tri sentinel and then i believe he gets her to stop next click with hulk we're able to one turn hulk once and then we kind of stay away from him we move up another blah blah basically the game went to time again and i was able to win on points i was able to fully take out hulk um, the only time the elements converter mattered was he uh, had Magneto on the edge of the map and Magneto took one damage, the 25 point Magneto. And then eventually Batman took one damage, which for Batman, Batman prime, it uh, doesn't really matter when he takes one damage. It's, it's honestly probably more helpful that he does. So, and also I never used any of the powers on the elemental converter dial ever for captain Marvel. And I never brought in Galactus. Last game was against Lucas. Um, I'm going to say it was 100% positioning. Uh, it was 100% play style. He had Punisher War Machine. He had the Pharaoh. He had double 1776. So I was down two actions, which is rough to play against, guys. Trust me. Um, and then he had Magneto. 25-point Magneto. This game, I'm not going to go into it. It was a real slog fest. It ended up being like I screwed up my first barriers and miscounted his reach. Thought I was safe. He was able to get a direct diagonal on Captain Marvel. He was able to take her to her last click. And then I was like, okay, we got to make the hit count. He double perplexes up War Machine's defense. Perplexes down my damage value. I move up with Marvella so I can get an empower off. I double perplex up my damage value. Double perplex it up with Captain Marvel and with 1776. I move up, move through Agent, War Machine Square. And I'm like, okay, I have a few shots at an eight. Let's do it. I have one prob. He can prob me. Let's see what happens. I roll an eight. He probs me. I miss. I prob me. I miss. I prob again. I miss. So I was like, dang, that is pretty much game. I should have popped out Chewy just to pop out Chewy. Perplex up Captain Marvel's defense, whatever. Should, should have just done it. I don't know why I didn't. She was going to die next turn anyways. Um, 
or perplex it per attack before I go and do that. So I missed the big attack to try to hit him for five and then ping him one after for six, which would have just dealt him three, so four, which would have been nice. Anyways, uh, the game was pretty much over after that point. I had the scrolls try to attack. I moved up 1776 a little too late. It's a little too late. It's a little too blue. I'm a little too tired. It's a little too good to be true. Oh, I'm getting through. Ah, I forget the rest of the song. Anyways, it was rough. I lost. Uh, then Lucas played against Joe and uh, beat him, and he won Constructed. So once again, grat- congratulations to Lucas. After that, they did a raffle, and this is going to be it for Nationals. Sorry, guys. I know I'm the rambling man right now. We're just talking, 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 but it was a pretty packed weekend, and there is honestly a lot. Like I'm not telling you guys because there's just so much. Uh, anyways, after that, congrats to Lucas. He also got a really cool eagle statue. had an American flag on it. I was pretty jelly, not going to lie. Um, and then as soon as he got the statue, he was like, eagle bros. That was, that was pretty cool. That was pretty sick. So we were in the hotel room. We put them next to each other. It was pretty. It was awesome. It was awesome. So uh, then we did the raffles. He was doing raffles all weekend, uh, Grover. And you got tickets for entering an event. And then you got blue tickets for however well you placed in an event. So placing first in sealed and then top four in popper and then top four in constructed overall was really good like i had a really good weekend like just kind of like for placement uh joe also had a really good weekend joe kind of did the same thing i don't know how well he didn't sealed but he got top two in both constructed and in popper so uh joseph uh, did awesome this weekend as well in placement so you know congrats to him for sure too like even though he didn't get to put his name on any like winning builds or like winning stuff or whatever. Uh, he had like really good consistent placement, which I also think is huge. Um, and also, yeah, of course, congrats to Lucas for getting like first place, obviously for constructed. So that was also huge. Um, I just wanted to make sure we recognize those guys and a lot of people that got like top four and stuff. Like it's big, it's big. Anyways, the raffles. Uh, Quick before we get into it, uh, Charlie had was like during the second or third game of Constructed, he was he said, "Hey, dude, if you win and you get another Galactus, since I'd already won one this weekend, uh, will you sell it to me for eighty bucks?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure, I'll shake on that, you know, because it's like it's a big if I win, you know." So I'm like, "If I do win, I don't want to haul it all the way back to South Dakota. If I don't win, it's like whatever." So yeah, let's shake on it. Uh, and it finally came time to do the raffle drawing for Galactus. They call out a number. No one responds. They're not there. Okay. Next up, call out the second number. Last four, five, zero, three, seven. I look at one of my blue raffle tickets. I see that the top one says five, zero, three, five. And I'm like, oh, baby, five, zero, three, six. Next one down, five, zero, three, seven. Your boy won a Galactus. So I went home. Sort of not really. Went home with two Galactuses that weekend. And I instantly said, hey, Charlie, like we shook on it. We made a deal. So here you go, bro. He's like, what? Really? And I'm like, yeah, we shook on it. Man's words, a man's words. So he got a Galactus for 80 bucks. You know, like that's like a win-win situation. You know what I'm saying? So overall, awesome weekend. The National Guard guys that were running it had such great enthusiasm. One dude was like, he had no idea how Heroclix worked. And it was like, Heroclix players, start your engines. Like, he just had such awesome enthusiasm for every round. He was like, we're not going to be doing any. Uh, he, so the first, very first tournament, very first game, he gave us a 10-minute warning for how much time was left on the clock. Nice. Which, for Hero Clicks, you're like, whoa, wait, what? <laughs> so it's really funny. When that happens, I get what he's doing, though. It's like uh, if you're watching a cooking show, it's like you have just 10 minutes left to finish your souffle or like whatever, you know, like it's cool. It builds anticipation. It's hype. But like for hero clicks, you're like, well, let's uh, let's not do that. What in the world? Um, But like he was just excited about it. He was like, so then every time after that, when he was like, you're going to have 45 to 55 minutes. No, no time calling for all you stallers out there. And I was like, oh, savage, bro. Like <laughs> he was hilarious. It, this guy was awesome. So super cool, dude. All the volunteers were great. Um, and overall, had an awesome, awesome time at Indy. Uh, my voice is almost gone. I don't normally do this much talking, even though I have a podcast. So thank you guys so much for listening to this. Goodness gracious. Now we can go on with the rest of the show. But Indy overall was just awesome. It was awesome to play in real life. For those of you worried, obviously, I said we had temperature checks when we came in and we wore masks the entire time. Um, except like when eating and drinking, because obviously you can't do that through a mask. I'm not Dr. McNinja, okay? Um, 
and uh, one like one time they brought in like Little Caesars pizza, and uh, like they just bought a ton of Little Caesars pizza, and he was like, "Hey, it's free for everybody," and I was like, "Oh heck yeah!" Like even though it's Little Caesars, it's like it's still free food, like awesome. So yeah, everybody was super cool. We all had fun, friendly games, and I just really enjoyed it. So I hope they do it again. You know, the dude uh, planned it out. He wanted to make sure everybody had a fun time. And there was a lot more than just hero clicks there. There's D and D. There was open gaming. There was hero clicks, free play areas. He had um, really big, you know, plans. And a lot of those really big plans weren't able to happen due to, you know, I wouldn't say poor, but like average attendance. You know, for like seals, they had twenty people join in and i'm like man i wish there was more than 20 people you know for popper there was 14 people and then for constructed i think it was like 18 or something um and there there were some people that didn't only showed up you know for one day and that that happens i get it but definitely if he does this again i'm going to talk about it nonstop. if he does it again let's have him on the show like i want as many people to know about this as possible because it was a three-day hero Quest weekend we weren't able to have any of those this year so and i i love love playing and I just, I want this to happen. I want more people to show because you gotta, for people that do this for the community, they deserve the support. So once again, thank you so much Grover for having it. Uh, thank you for doing all of this. So we can just have a fun weekend. That's all I gotta say about Indy. I thought it was awesome. And yeah, so Simeon, go for it. Any thoughts, any whatever. No, uh, my only question was gonna be if you ever got like how far up Galactus's dial did you ever get clicked? <laughs> but you said you never got him on the map, so... I never did. Um, I did get him to the big red number four, though. So that was in one of the games where I was like, oh, man, I should just make a run for the opponent's starting area and try to get Galactus in. That's the biggest thing, is that I didn't have any TK on the team, so if I would have, I would have had to go there, wait a turn, right, and then power action, and if it, I, don't, I can't remember if it's a double power action or not, so I could have had to go there, clear, and then double power action you know what i'm saying so yeah and even then it's on a four it Uh, is strange that WizKid is WizKids has released like several things saying how they want to like speed up uh gameplay and then they release a galactus that relies kind of heavily on the game taking like a decent amount of time like if you don't get like 10 rounds you might not bring Galactus in. You might not like click him up. The elemental converter might not actually do anything. Yeah, um, it is kind of weird that like there's that weird dichotomy. But it's cool that like that's the first event that I think has actually been hosted where Galactus has been legal. I believe so because it was just legal this weekend. There was also an Arkansas states this weekend, so I don't know how many people played Galactus in that. But I do know that also happened this weekend. I haven't seen teams from it, though. But really, um, I don't think Galactus is as big of a deal. Now, this team was not built to try to bring Galactus on the map. It was more so built because I had a Galactus and I wanted to throw him on the team, really. Right. So It was a good team you know, that you put Galactus yeah. on. Even even then, I think Galactus's big contribution to the game, as far as like right now, going forwards, I think his biggest contribution is going to be one, the elemental converter will keep people from building like turtle teams. Not that that was like a big thing before, but I think that at at the very least, like people consider that Galactus could be played and they won't be able to stay like in a small area the entire game. And the second thing is just it's the cheapest way to give somebody willpower and protected outwit, and it's also just right infinitely better than the infinity gauntlet. It's not only five points cheaper, it also yeah. gives you powers, which the Infinity Gauntlet that gives you Power Cosmic doesn't do that. And you don't have to roll to, like, lose it. It's just permanently there. So, right. yeah. So I would say um, Captain Marvel, for sure, does not benefit from Galactus specifically. Um, yes, she's, like, sort of hard to kill. So, like, that potentially gives you more longevity to spin the um, Elemental Converter dial. But as far as speed power goes, it gives you like running shot and then like charge and then hypersonic, which she has some or some variation or better version of all of those powers for all of her dial. You know what I'm saying? So like those speed powers don't matter. And then also they're going to with her defense values and powers, they're going to hit her to clicks that are protected outwit for her defense. Yeah, just what I was about to say anyways, like. 
she already has willpower and then they're going to hit her to protect it outwit. So it Galactus isn't the biggest buff for her. I could see maybe Galactus on uh, Immortal Hulk, which is huge, right? Like power cosmic on Immortal Hulk is pretty big, you know, but he also has a lot of clicks where he is protected outwit, you know? So it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a weird thing. Anyways, that's all I've got to say about it. I didn't like interview my opponents. Like, so did the elemental converter make you, uh, did you, did it make you move up? <laughs> did it make you scared? Were you scared? Were you, were you shivering in your boots? Like I didn't like, you know, <laughs> interrogate any of my opponents to like get their feeling on it or whatever. I just like went through the rest of my games, you know, like it only damaged two people the whole time. So I, I guess I, it depends on map and stuff. Elemental so, yeah. converter combined that's, that's with 1776 it. really does. It not only shuts down turtle oh, yeah. teams, but also like swarm teams if you don't have a really good taxi and you've only got like two actions like against like a like a wendigo swarm where you've only got two actions cuz like maybe like let's just say someone's playing 20 wendigos they're going to lose a lot of those wendigos just from the elemental converter because they won't be able to move up the wendigos fast enough and that's pretty fun right on i mean it's at least at least in that scenario it's fun it kind of sucks for like uh other swarm teams but nobody needs to play that is true games. and if i had played against that obviously I'd, I'd have like a cool story where i was like dude i was able to murder however many uh people in one turn it was awesome but also it takes uh four turns uh at the slowest to get to the elemental converters even being on the board right you know unless we can get within five of an opposing character or kill an opposing character like really early on so that's just the way it is. But anyway, that that was not nationals. It was awesome. I can't say enough good things about it. Let's go ahead. Let's jump into a uh, generic gallery so we can keep the show on the road. Why should you care? Keywords. 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 So why should you care? Keywords. It's only a game. Why do you have to be mad? Celebrity, police, past, and scientist, assassin, soldier, spy, tinker, tailor. No, they, they're not in there, but, you know, you get it. Generic yes. gallery is where we choose a generic keyword and we kind of go over some of our favorite figures. We make a 300 or 400 point team out of a generic keyword and we kind of talk about some figures we enjoy. So, Simeon, you're kind of mixing your hidden gallery. Uh, it's gracious. Your generic gallery with your hidden gem. So why don't you go into your team? Yeah, so... The generic keyword that we went with this week is going to be the future keyword. Future. So future is not given as much stuff as past. There's a lot of like past figures. There's not as many future figures because one, I mean, they're just not written in comics as often. There's, you know, there's like your cables. There's your, uh, what is it, Rachel Summers. Um, there's a lot of like random future storylines, but they're not as fully fleshed out as like a past storyline. And so one of the biggest things that the future keyword has available is the KC figures. All KC figures have the future keyword. It's a futuristic take on the DC universe. And so they all got that keyword. But I didn't put any of those on my team. So my 300 point team, I couldn't go with anyone better than the uh, TMNT 2 Renee Tilly. This is the taxi one. The other one does some cool stuff. She hands out uh, prob and does some like interesting stuff for your team but this one not only has she got a 12 speed with sidestep and can carry up to four characters doesn't specify any keywords or anything she can just carry up to four not only can she do that but on her second click and her fourth click so what i usually did with her when i played her would be um i'd taxi up turn one maybe sidestep her back a little bit and then turn two most of the time, and with that taxi ability, she also has phasing teleport. So it's phasing teleport sidestep. You could phase up 12 squares or, you know, minus three, so nine squares if you're carrying four people. Then sidestep back two. And then my second turn, I would push her because she doesn't have indom. 
to her special damage power, which is Renee Tilly can use probability control regardless of range and line of fire. It's just a blanket effect. It's basically, I mean, in simpler words, it is just Renee Tilly can reroll attacks and breakaways anywhere on the map. So it's a really cool power. Uh, she's kind of squishy, so and she doesn't get a lot better down dial. So it it's kind of a thing that like you, if you really need that power, you know, you push to it. Otherwise, she has standard prob. But man, it's really fun just like parking her back in your starting area and just having that like once per turn prob anywhere on the map for any attack or any breakaway. So I started the team off with her. She's 55 points. And then I had to go with one of my favorite characters, one of my favorite storylines of all time, and that is Old Man Logan from the uh, Xavier's School set. He starts with a 12 attack with blades for his first three clicks. It's pretty awesome. And then he's got a longest road trip trait, which I've never used. It's once per game if a friendly character that can use this trait is KO'd in an opponent's starting area. You can take an extra turn after your next turn. It sounds really cool. I've never once been in a position where I was like, that'll benefit me. And as far as I know, this is the only figure with that trait. Um, it sounds like a trait that they would give to like multiple people, but it's literally this is the only figure we've ever gotten with it. Even the other old man Logan, the Connell Lee, doesn't have it. Uh, he also is traded regen. When he uses it, he heals one less. So even though it's traded, it's not the best thing in the world. You kind of have to hedge your bets with it. And then the biggest thing for this guy, um, he is indom, does start off with charge and then some sidestep. But his first three clicks, his damage power is empower. And adjacent friendly characters of less points can use combat reflexes. If they already can, modify their defense plus one instead. So building a team with these two figures so far, the whole idea is that I'm going to have some close combat to get that in power, but also lock down some opponents and use that combat reflexes. So not only do I have to have figures that are lower points than Old Man Logan, they also have to be adjacent to him and close combat. And then... Filling out the team, uh, can't go wrong with two DDs from the Batman animated series. They're 015, I think they're, I'm pretty sure they're commons. They have the, uh, they have sidestep and passenger one, but only to carry their double. So, uh, one, one DD can carry the other and they have sidestep. So like they can sidestep, carry one sidestep, carry the other, which is pretty fun. Um, you modify attack plus one if they're adjacent to each other. And they both have empower and shape change, but only if adjacent to each other. So they start off with a 10 for two. If they're adjacent, that's an 11 for three. And then next to the old man Logan, that's an 11 for four, which is pretty solid hmm. for a 45 point piece. They also have the Batman enemy team ability that doesn't really come into play in this team, but it is cool. I also had to throw on Asuka because Asuka is one of the few, well, she's the only WWE character, but she's one of the very few uh, non-Marvel or DC set figures that has the future keyword. Uh, one of her biggest things, of course, being submission hold, and it's a special submission hold where if when she uses it, you increase the damage plus one for each Asuka lock token the target has and after resolutions you give the target an Oscar lock token so after you use it the first time they have zero they get one then uh, the next time you use it they would take two damage instead of three and then you give them another Oscar lock token maximum two Oscar locks and then you're dealing submission damage with three damage which gets through impervious gets through invincible Almost all, I mean, it gets through almost everything except, like, special reducers. And it's a pretty sweet power. Since this would be a multiverse game, she gets, like, the grand entrance. And she also gets, starting her off on, like, 40 points, won't get her the protected from outwit and range right away. But she does have four clicks long, and uh, 
Uh, you can push her to a combat reflexes. So if you push her to click two next to Old Man Logan, she has a 16 combat reflexes and can't be targeted from range. And then next to him, she gets a plus one. So she's automatically a 19. And then she only gets better on like clicks three and four. So always a really, really good idea for any kind of future team is to dig up one of those, uh, well, just Asuka in general. But honestly, I think any WWE figure really helps out like a nice casual non-named theme build if you can find it. That's the hardest part is being able to actually find the piece that would have a keyword that matches what you're doing. And uh, from this team, I just played Asuka at 80 because there's really, for the most part, your future stuff is going to be a lot higher points. Um, you're looking at like yeah. 100, 150 is usually what they come in at. Um, you've got a lot of like cables, a lot of... Just like, I mean, like the KC figures in general is like not like a great place to start when you're team building, but you're looking at, you know, easily like 150 to 200 points per character if you're doing KC figures. And so you really don't have a lot of wiggle room to make like a small team, but I like, I like the Renee carrying up like four people and then all of them being close combat. There's not any outwit or perplex there's only the prob and you have to really hope your opponent doesn't have like a bunch of rollouts because otherwise you're just kind of waiting to deal them damage with oscar later dial well right on the team i built is kind of different from yours yours is a very close combat oriented team which gives yourself like the high damage the high attack with dds and just wolverine having like you know a static 12 or well 11s later on but Really good attack value averages and stuff, especially with Asuka, um, close combat expert, and then ramping up if she can get the whole uh, oh, her plus one, yeah, queen of tomorrow, that's the whatever. Other thing is, uh, all of those aside from her signature move, if Asuka does manage to KO figures, she gets to pick a combat value on her dial, so speed, attack, defense, damage. She gets to pick one of those and gets to increase it by one for the rest of the game. Um, she gets to continue doing that for as many characters that she KOs. And once she gets all four combat values filled by, with a plus one, um, the next time you KO somebody, you heal her two clicks instead. Which is already just way too good for any figure, like having stat boosts like that. But then she also has that Asuka lock just makes it really easy to finish off like lower point figures or bystanders or whatever okay right on dude so yeah very much in that same vein i built a team like that but instead very range heavy base so i have basically 100 points of this team is support but it's good support so this is this is my little foundation for my future team we have skeet 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 skeets at 35 points he is a flight tiny indom but big thing here is he's got police and he has enhancement on dial uh, he has a special speed power, which is the only power he has that's useful, that, that he has really at 35 points. And that is adjacent friendly characters modify their attack values by plus one. If that character's named Booster Gold, modify his attack value by plus two instead. So from range, he's giving a negative one to the defense of an opposing character with police. He's giving you a plus one damage from range because of enhancement. And then he's just always giving you a plus one attack. For being adjacent which is cool anyone can carry him because he's tiny so skeets is great next up for support is golden skull i talked about him on pirate well the bad boys got future we're gonna talk about him again he gives you the death bots which are a little sidestep nine attack pen blast two damage not gonna go into those that more more than that he also has sidestep and he's got mastermind which gives him some longevity with his death bots he has a trait um Sorry, that's the death. That's the whole death boss thing. No one cares about that. We already we already did it. But the big thing is their actions don't count against your action total. So it's huge the amount of shots you can take in a turn. His damage power throughout his whole dial is perplex leadership. Adjacent friendly characters modify attack by you plus one. So if they're adjacent to skeets and this guy, they got a plus two attack, which is awesome. All right. So I'm, I'm going nuts in the stat mods here. Next up for support. 
we got your girl power woman so i'm, I'm playing a kc figure simian didn't but i'm definitely playing a kc dude she has a special speed power uh action total plus one beginning of your turn action total plus one so with leadership 300 point game we got five actions baby plus two death bots who actions don't count against our action total which is awesome so it's the same thing as every other KC, isolated from a violent world. She starts the game, plays six squares from any starting area, not adjacent to another character. She's on click 11, which is a one click, which also has enhancement and an 18 defend. So if you want to try to go for it, I, I would never say this will consistently work for you. But if you want to try it and try to get some good placement on her, you can also make use of her enhancement for range as well. So you can potentially be plus two to attack and plus two to damage if you're adjacent to all the right people. So I definitely that's good. Tried to build a few teams. I tried to build uh tried to build a few teams around her 18 defend and just like Yeah. For 25 points, yeah. that's hard to beat. If you have like you know, oh, it is. You would combat reflexes. A, a plus like one action on top of leadership is super nice. Plus, you know, 18 defend is huge. Especially for these uh for these low defense guys, Golden Skull obviously only has 17, Death Bots only have a, have only a 16, Skeets has a 17, but ESD. So it brings some longevity. So now you're like, bro, who are your attackers? We're wasting like over a hundred points in support, but it's really good support. Let me tell you who my attackers are. Your boy Booster Gold had to be on the team. So he's a 10 attack. Let's make that bad boy a 13 when he's next to Skeets and Golden Skull. So it's capped out, right? He himself has Perplex, and he can modify his own. So it's Perplex and Prob. When he uses Perplex to target himself, he can modify combat value other than damage plus two. So you know your boy is sitting at a 20 the entire time. Because of all his normal attack mods, he doesn't even need to put any into damage or attack because it's awesome. And if you need better placement, you can also sub that into attack, which is fine. If you want to, running shot with skeets, etc., etc. Or range, yeah. All right. Or range what do you mean oh yeah oh yeah absolutely you're right uh make it an eight range instead of a six so that's also really cool he has just the unlimited doesn't help power woman is the only person you can take it off of um can't really do any actions there anyways so he also has barriers free uh and also barrier period barriers free lets him generate two markers which is awesome trust me as a dude play who played two super scrolls all this last weekend and for the last for as long as he can remember uh, barrier is free to generate one marker is awesome one person doing it to generate two is also dope he uh, he has an attack power which is in cap and knockback so there's no um, good penetrating damage on this team besides death bots but he has straight up just all caps knockback on his attack power which is super awesome when you're hitting for how much damage this team can get you up to so booster gold he's also in vulnerability six clicks of life for 80 points he also has flight so we can carry some people up He's a really solid attacker on this team. You're like, Calder, that's great, but we need more attackers than just Booster. That's where I see that, and I say, well, let's go ahead and get your boy Cable on the team. So we're paying 100 points for Cable with this hologram trait, which adds, which lets you add two more Cables to your starting force on, a, on the click one that appears after the orange KO. They have a zero point value for all effects, but you don't have to reveal any Cable's point value until required. So... You have two clicks of a top dial cable, which is on all three of them. So you have three top got top dial cables, which is awesome. What do they have top dial? Sidestep and phasing, seven range, 11 attack, three damage, 70 defense, invulnerability. I already told you all the damage modifiers. These bad boys can be hidden for a ton of damage. They also have TK once per turn for all characters is power. They can TK as free, which is once again, also huge for the mobility of this team. So I just gave you four really good attackers that can all shoot in one turn. And guess what? Deathbots can all shoot in one turn. And then we can even do more after that. And after all of that, you guys, we are down to 10 points left. The only 10 point future is Brainiac. Brainiac is mad expensive. It's the trouble alert. Brainiac. Um, he has outwit. Bunch of other stuff. I'm not going to go into him. Basically... He's there to fill points. If you don't want to put crazy expensive Brainiac on your team, um, put two, uh, not thugs, suited henchmen on the team, which is also fine. Brainiac, though, is another good thing with um, potential free damage and then outwit. So yeah. I really like I really like this future team. I'm not going to lie, guys. I think it's pretty awesome, and I kind of want to pick up a booster gold so I can play this future team. And honestly, I feel like 
me and Simeon need to start playing these teams like in a on our YouTube channel when we build them because we built we built some good teams. I really like them. So I would have never built the future keyword uh, unless Simeon chose it for this week's generic gallery. So Simeon, thank you so much. And if you guys want to put these teams together and play them, let me know how you did. I think we built two really really cool and fun teams, especially for casual. Um, Very so try them out teams too. Uh, my team is very, very close. Oh, yeah combat related so i think it would come down if these two teams uh did end up meeting it would come down to whether you got the right map because uh let's see what were you at you were a plus six uh skeets booster gold golden skull power woman brainiac that's five I don't know if we count. I don't think. Is it during force construction? It is. So do we count the two extra cables? Uh, it'd be... During force construction. Since it is force construction, I, don't, yeah, construction, I, don't know I imagine. 100% for that one. So it's potentially, potentially seven. But let's say I probably wouldn't play Brainiac since most people don't have him. So it, let's, let's say six-ish or whatever. So And if we're wrong, that's okay, guys. Don't worry about it. But yeah, I think it would come down to map. I think if you win map, I think it's rough. Map wide prob is is obviously tough to shake. I have no prob on my team at all, so I'm hundred percent relying on. You big do have rolls. the benefit of you know? uh, most likely winning map. Like if we had even rolls, you would win, and getting those first shots off would definitely be. I've only got a few rollouts, and I don't have. I don't have defenses that are going to stand up to that 14 attack that uh, huh. you can have with Cable. Yeah, yeah, it's gnarly. It's gnarly. But right, guys, that is Generic Gallery. I love, I think I really love it, seeing how differently we build teams. I can't wait to do more of these. And if you guys enjoy this segment, by all means, let us know, because it's super fun. But wait, wow, that looks like a diamond. For the hidden gem this week, I was sticking with theme for future stuff. And this is a figure from the Avengers Infinity set. So this is a Ooh. rare, but the Avengers Infinity uh, single base rares weren't really crazy expensive or anything. And this guy especially, I feel like, got overlooked. He might have been like a solid pick in Sealed, but this is number 028 Maxim. Now, Maxim mm. starts off the game with Flight Charge for his first four clicks and Super Strength for his first four clicks. He also is kind of like the Hulk, where his defense power gets better and higher as he gets damaged. So he starts off with a 17 Toughness, second two clicks are 17 Invuln, and then two clicks of 18 Impervious, and then a click of 18 Invincible, and then a 19 Invincible. Uh, he starts off with three clicks of Battle Fury, and then he goes to his special damage power that is Battle Fury, Willpower, and the Giant Symbol. So um, he also has the Gem Bearer trait. This was for AI. The Gem Bearer trait was certain characters like Gamora and Drax had quote unquote the like gem. It wasn't the actual like ABPI gem. It was just like a static effect that was a trait on their card. And then when they were KO'd, they could choose another character to carry on that trait in a slightly different way. So I think Gamora was like prob or something like that. And then if you gave it to someone else, they could use prob, but it wasn't like as good as Gamora's version. So his gem bear trait thing is when you choose him for that effect, you may place him in that character's square and then heal him up to two clicks. So if you were giving him, like, the power gem, for, like, Jack Drax gets KO'd and you decide to pick Maxim, he gets to swap over to where Drax was, and then he gets not only the gem, but he also gets to heal two clicks, which, honestly, I kind of don't like healing this guy because he gets really good late dial. So that's, like, the main thing that I like this guy for is for a hundred points. He's not only like a decent taxi and a solid secondary attacker, but if you really throw him in the fray and there's not an easy way to KO him right away, but if you throw him into like the fray and he gets a few knocks taken and gets on to like click five, I think is where he really starts to shine. Click four and five are pretty decent. He's got charge super strength with an 11 attack on click four, three damage, 
but he can pick up a heavy or can still hold on to a heavy, so he can be doing five. And then he's got Battle Fury, Willpower, and Giant Symbol. On click five through seven, so for his last three clicks, he's got Flurry, and his damage is four, four, five, and his attack is 11, 11, 12. So for a 100-point figure with no stat modifiers, no team help, he's pumping out a lot of damage. And the best part is, like, you get him up close and you knock, you get a couple of those, like, hits. You maybe, like, throw one of the gems on him and heal him once or something like that. Or get him just, like, prob or extra damage or whatever the gems do. Um, You get him to one of those higher click values or lower down the dial clicks. He's still got that giant reach from giant symbol. So he might not have the highest speed, but if he's tied up with somebody, he's doing, you know... 12 for 5, 11 for 4, etc. And uh, I think he's just a really solid piece to build around, especially if, you, if you're if you looking for like a cheaper set to pick up some single figures, that Avengers Infinity really has some great pieces, and you don't have to have the objects, you don't have to actually equip to use the, the Power Gem Bearer thing, so that's kind of fun as well. You can have Drax with the Power Gem, and then hand it off to Maxim when Drax goes away, or uh, Time Gem on Gamora, and same thing. So, like, Maxim can actually have, technically, all six gems without actually equipping anything. It's not an actual physical relic, it's just, like, a trait. So it's pretty cool. Right on. I gotta say, I didn't see Maxim play, like, besides when we did sealed events... I do think he was pretty overlooked when like building a casual like team. I don't think I ever saw him played outside of sealed. So definitely yeah. guys go back. If you want to check out Maxim for There's sure. One big, uh, the one big problem with him is he's not protected out wit. So even though he's got a pretty long mm, dial, yeah. he's got ways to heal his stats go up and his defense powers go up in power. Um, he is vulnerable to outwit. So he has to watch out for that, but other than that, like I've faced him a few times randomly, and I've played him a few times, and he's always like just really surprising, especially if you don't have that like big punch to hit like his impervious with like penetrating damage for four damage or something, and you land him on that like nineteen invincible, then all of a sudden he's just you know this unstoppable monster that's breathing down your neck. Right on. All right, guys, I think it's been. It's been a while. Let's go and take a trip. Taking a trip down to the corner, baby. Taking a trip down to the down to the value corner. Hey, Michael, look at this. Hero click. Eight dollars. That's a good deal. All right, this figure. I like to keep you guys in the dark, but I think it's gonna take you all five seconds to figure out who this figure is. So, Spider-Man Ally team ability. No special combat symbols. Oh, that's a lie. One special combat symbol. Autonomous. Zero range, doesn't need it. Celebrity, Spider-Man Family Stark Industries, 15 points. You don't know who it is, I'm sorry. So, ooh baby, here we go. Trait, secret identity. When blank is KO'd, would be KO'd, you may instead replace them with a secret identity character listed, the name, on click number nine. This game, when that replacement is KO'd, it scores this character's points in an additional 25. So even when you lose this 15-point character, when they go through all that work with this character's 17 defense, with ESD and shape change. That's right. This, this bad boy, this bad girl. Ooh, ooh, there's another little hint. They got a rollout. Your girls got a rollout. All right. Plus, Spider Man family, just saying, copy some of them scrolls. Get that 50 50 rollout going. Oh, yeah. 50 50 rollout. Oh, yeah, baby. All right. So, it's Mary Jane, obviously. Obviously, we're talking about Mary Jane. I think point for point cost wise, after playing this weekend, uh, and after being alive and breathing air on this earth since the Spider-Man family set came out, Mary Jane, point for point, is the best thing in modern right now. 15 points, autonomous, sidestep. This is where she really shines, right? She she dies. She gets KO'd. She isn't. She's not scored. You make another figure, which has another three clicks you have to chew through, which, by the way, you go Marvella, she got toughness, right? You go She-Venom. Guess what? Your girl's got super senses. Okay? You go... uh, And shape change. 
You go Iron Man, 18, invulnerability. Got a reducer with perplex. All right. All very, very good. Sorry, Marvella actually has ESD, not toughness. I, I totally thought she had toughness for some reason. She has 17 ESD. My bad. She does hit like so, a truck, though. She's like she does, yeah. And then she's and on. Power. Then she's a charge and attack three damage and power with super strengths. So you can do, she can do knockback. She dies. She goes to Iron Man. She uh, when she hits the range combat attack after resolutions, each hit target is knocked back four squares. Improved targeting, North hindering terrain, ten attack with perplex, only one damage, but they're still getting that four square knockback, which is dope. All right. So this figure is a little hard to kill. Doesn't eat up your action total. Is solid. Plus, it's Mary Jane, and we all know our, our pretty much everyone's first comic crush was your girl Mary Jane Watson. Let's be real. All right, let's be real. So, where does she really shine? This is it, right? So, all of that is is icing. This right here, this is the cake. And trust me, Mary Jane's got cakes, ladies and gentlemen. Power, no friendly character, no friendly bystanders named paparazzi are on the map. Roll these six, generate a number of paparazzi bystanders equal to half the result. In unoccupied squares within four squares. So she can sidestep up to make paparazzi out four. They have sidestep, they have 10 attack incapacitate, they got a five speed, two range, incapacitate, sidestep, 15 defense, zero damage. So think about this. At the very least, you're popping out one. They are also autonomous. They're free in capping. 10 attack is solid, guys. For a free attack, it's it's dope. It's super dope. All right. Then you'd be like, whoa we get two out here i can double in cap somebody we get three out here we can in cap somebody and deal them a penetrating damage if we hit them with another in cap or on the reverse side with it let's say we don't get three hits we get three misses we're playing a competitive game that's a trouble alert those paparazzi just free brought in black vulcan you didn't even have to crit miss and boom pen poison there's your free damage right there baby the utility mary jane has is insane what you can do with the paparazzi is crazy First turn equips, they're done like that. They don't take up any actions, right? She sidesteps. She can at the very least bring one out, you know, and at the best, boom, you're bringing three out. It's it's awesome. So she brings out two, she brings out one, she brings out three. It doesn't matter, all right? You're getting one equip for free because no matter what, Soldier 76, Soldier 76, <laughs> Spidey 1776 is still all the way back in their starting area on your first turn, right? So you'll be able to go up You'll be able to get, even with your two actions, all this autonomous stuff means you can equip two objects. Your, your actions are done, sure, or equip one object. And it's better than not being able to equip any objects at all because you got to waste a real action on sidestep. Mary Jane, for action economy, for survivability, for paparazzi, for the ability to make this many attacks, you get paparazzi on the board, they in-cap someone, or they all try to in-cap somebody one turn, they each have a token. Guess what? You push them all to death to in-cap someone again, then she makes more paparazzi, and you in-cap them again. Potentially, you can get six in-caps on someone in a turn, and you can just roll a lot of dice. And who doesn't love rolling dice? Mary Jane is like borderline impre like oppressive. I would say she is pretty much oppressive. You still got to play her smart. You know, don't be playing her with, you know, against Vulture, like like your idiot host here who uh, who let Vulture have some free food. Please do not feed the Vulture. All right, guys, you know, don't be letting people have a really easy energy explosion, you know, to just kill them all. They're like, oh, whatever. You know, if someone's got steel energy and they're on like low and they're colossal stamina, you know, maybe don't throw these bad boys up there just to get eaten. You know, if they miss all their in caps and they don't even have to push to do it, don't let them just be free food. But the crazy amount of economy that Mary Jane brings point for point for 15 points to your team is absolutely nuts. And that is why I chose her for value corner. So with all of that, Simeon, now she is a common, but she is insane. The set just came out. How much do you think Mary Jane is worth? See, this is a figure that I assume a lot of people have like snatched up. So it is a common, but I don't know. I don't think you'd honestly need more than two, maybe three, if you like wanted just like the cheap team filler stuff. Right. She's not Silver Ring. Just yeah, so you guys so know. Not she's Silver not Ring. unique. I definitely have plans for like teams of like having two of her on there so that I don't have to push one constantly to bring out paparazzi. Uh, and then maybe three just in case one gets KO'd easily. So I'm going to say since it's like almost as sought after as a generic would be i'm gonna say it's probably close to like a dollar 25 dollar 50 pretty fair pretty fair 
those those Doctor Fates, they be a little high. Those Jokers, they're they're up there. Generics, they're they're high. They're up there. If you didn't buy any Spider Man, I understand why. Without certain figures in the set, I probably would have skipped it too. So let's say you skipped Spider Man, you somehow didn't get any Mary Jane Watsons, or it just wasn't in the card right now financially for you to get Spider Man. There's more than twelve on CoolStuffInc.com, and this bad girl's only fifty cents. That's right. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. That's like a fourth of your laundry budget for the wash anyways, not the dryer, but for the wash for the week, boom, 50 cents gets you a Mary Jane. I, I really can't stress how important that someone should just try with how prevalent Spider-Man family is with how good it is. And even throwing her on a non theme. Oh yeah. Besides just- the fact that she's a cheap 15 to theme throwing her on a non theme is totally cool too, because it, once again, I said easy equips, all these free attacks, all this in cap. It's awesome. 50 cents. I'm not going to talk about her much more than this. I already went way crazy. So let's do 50 cents for Mary Jane. Let's go ahead. Let's say you want some She Venom action. Marvella is a rare. She's a little expensive, but She Venom. Okay. She Venom's going to cost you two bucks. Let's check out Iron Man here. Iron Man is only 50 cents, who I would honestly argue is probably the best thing to bring in. So Iron Man is 002. Uh, I think that's solid. So for a dollar, you can get Mary Jane and Iron Man, and you you are set. You are set, my friend. All right. For 98 cents, coolstuffinc.com, plus 5% off using code DIAL5, D-I-A-L-5, 5% off Cool Stuffing order. You get a really, a really solid, like, she is on, she's not a base to a team, but she is a invaluable 15-point addition, I would say. Yeah. If that future team that is, that is why she had 15 points corner. instead of 10 oh, yeah. left over, having paparazzi with 12 attack for... I don't remember how much enhancement you had. They'd be easily be like 12 for threes or something like that. 12 for two even. When it's autonomous, it doesn't really matter. Like you're just yeah. roll like literally just rolling dice because you can. It doesn't matter if they get KO'd. They don't cost you mm-hmm. any points and you get to bring out more once they all are, are once they're all KO'd anyhow. So it's kind of like a benefit to get that one attack out there no matter what plus simeon it fits several criterias that whiz kids believe equal fun having more characters on the map <laughs> equals fun and she gets lets you have a ton of characters on the map uh dying but not you know actually dying is more fun uh making a lot of attacks is fun so you know who cares if it means your opponent's not having fun because they can't do any attacks because you've been kept them to death this is fun Whiz Kid says it's fun. Anyways, that was a kind of slight tangent there, guys. Sorry about that. That is this week's value corner. So let me know, guys, if you decide to pick up Marvella or Mary Jane, you're like, yo, I already had this chick, man. I pulled her a bunch in Spider Man. Or if you're like, all right, fine, skip Spider Man, but you're right. That's an invaluable 98 cents for Mary Jane and Iron Man. I'll do it. So definitely pick her up if you haven't already. This is this is my crazy stock market buy 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 dude going on right now so uh for sure check out check out uh check out mary jane watson all right solid man let's go ahead and finish off the show going into community there are dozens of us dozens this week's community tuesday's question was how do you feel about the new sculpts me and simeon already talked about them uh on the podcast a few weeks ago so we don't need to say this again so simeon why don't you just read me your favorite from facebook and we'll just do one each just our favorites Okay, I'm going to go with Jeff Bozeman's comment. He says, I believe that the only thing in life that is inevitable, innovate, innovatable, inevitable, inevitable, uh, the only thing that you can't you avoid serious? in life is change. Are you serious right now? <laughs> I don't know word well. Uh, he says, I'm totally okay with it. And liken it to rearranging your furniture. Change is good. Then he says, thanks for always being who you are, Calder and Simeon. Oh, nice. Well, thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Uh, On Twitter, Collectible said, not a fan of the change in scale, except for larger characters, Apocalypse, Blob, Thing, Hulk. I feel like I may sit these out. Then he goes on to reply to himself, it's not an earth-shattering change, but scale was already uneven, and this makes my existing collection feel obsolete. So it brings up an interesting point is, can you sit these out? Because this might just be the way the game is for the rest of its life, yeah, right? So like, future. 
yeah, you might just not get the choice. You you can maybe sit out these sets and you'll be like, rabble, rabble, rabble. Like, man, this, this is such a bummer. But then it's like, well, this is the way it's going to be forever. Like, I honestly was going to start when they made a change. Sorry for the tangent, guys. Made a change to cards. I honestly made several Captain America cards in the old card format. I prefer the way I still prefer the way it looks to this day. I don't like the new card format at all. Um, and I made them in a card generator and I made them for my Captain America pieces. But eventually I just had to accept this is the way cards are going to be. They suck and I hate them, but it's the way it is. So like, this is the way the cards are. So it's just sadly it's what goes kind of back to what Jeff says. The only thing in in in, in, in edible in however I don't know the word either innovative uh, innovative change in, innovative in, innovative innovative inevitable inevitable that's what it is all inevitable. right I got it yeah. inevitable oh yeah the Thanos yeah, yeah, thing the yeah the I am inevitable I get it that's in a superhero movie I see those I watch those <laughs> okay right on right on okay guys uh, we did get some mail this week in our email so that is. Dial H for hero clicks at gmail.com. If you guys want to send us an email like Will Smith did here, that's right. The Will Smith, probably not the, the Will Smith, but Will Smith did send us an email. So he says, hi, dial H for hero clicks. My name is William Smith and I'm relatively new to, uh, I'm a relatively new hero who's player and I really enjoy the game and the community. I also really enjoy your podcast and your YouTube channel. And I just had a few questions because I am kind of new to the game. I was just wondering where are events usually held? Where can I go to see where events are held? And also, how can I get better at the game? I don't really have a lot of people to play with. None of my friends really play it. And I was just wondering how I could get better at this game. So that is the first question. So, Will, I would direct you to our... We're still going to answer your question on this show. Yes. Don't worry about <laughs> it. But I would I would direct you to our new Clicks on the Block mega episode. If you go to our YouTube channel, it is normally the first video that plays if you aren't a subscriber. And I think I have the video that, if you are a subscriber, is set to the impressions on our YouTube channel. But, uh, Simeon, off the cuff, do you know exactly which episode new clicks on the block is if not i'm scrolling um, for it no no idea what uh it is okay it, i got gotcha. it is pinned it is episode to our Facebook group though the, so it is between server. episode 294 yeah it is also on pinned on a thing so it's not actually its own episode since we released it out of order it is in between 294 and 295 because it was obviously a segment we had at the beginning of each show for new hero host players so uh, we can link it in the description of this podcast, and I probably should just link it in the description of every podcast, let's be real, uh, for new clicks on the block. So definitely check that out. But to answer his question, Simeon, where can you normally go to find a venue or find Heroclix games? The first place that I went when I was first starting was uh, just local shops. So I always say local shops and kitchen tabletops keep whiz kids going like mostly the local shops but if you're in like a smaller city and you don't have like a big comic book venue or like tabletop game venue then that might just be something where you have to travel for and if that's the case the easiest way to find stuff there's actually two ways and i think the easiest is checking the whiz kids info network uh if you just google whiz kids info network it should be the first thing that pops up and you can just type in your zip code and it'll pull up like everything within, you know, 20 miles, 50 miles, whatever you set the radius to. And you'll be able to find shops and see if they're hosting events regularly or like what their current state is, whether they're hosting anything at all. Um, and then subsequently, one of the best ways is if you live in a larger suburb, like if you live in a like a tampa bay or something like that you could just search on facebook or google or whatever tampa bay hero clicks and you know sometimes you'll pop up with like the group a lot of times they're private groups so you'll have to find the venue that hosts them or find somebody that goes to like a venue and is part of the group to invite you or something like that but yeah the facebook groups are real big and like actually knowing the up-to-date kind of stuff when things are happening and then the info network is just a great way to find the locations um, you can also play online if you've paid attention to our youtube then you've seen uh, the tabletop simulator and you've seen roll 20 those are options and 
um, as far as like finding friendly like games and like where to learn how to play with that there's a couple different ones uh the discord that i would suggest for like fun play is called friendly hero clicks neighborhood and that's a roll 20 discord server on it's on discord and it's mostly just casual stuff but they they do like mock sealed with actual boosters that you can open and stuff like that um so that's a really decent way to play if there's no venues near you that are open right on right on basically you said everything i was going to say and a lot of what we covered in our new clicks on the block which is check out the win check out facebook those are definitely the two biggest places to find i know some people aren't you know big facebook fans but uh, those are the best places to find hero clicks venues for sure since most events should be put on the win i do know i played at a venue for years they were two hours away but whatever whenever i drive to them they didn't put anything on the win so it was hard for me to find them unless i looked for facebook so just so you know some people aren't on facebook some people aren't on the win check try both for sure he also goes on to say how many hero clicks would you say you guys have this is a tough question because i've been playing not playing but collecting for sure for eight years right so but i also every year after a modern cut right i realize what's all the stuff that i don't care to play anymore so mostly just competitive modern figures that i just don't see myself playing in golden because when it comes to golden i want to play lex luther and then whatever else for my competitive style golden team so i can normally cut out a bunch but also i collect every captain america and then i collect full sets some of them so for full sets, I have a full set of the original Captain America 2011 set, and then I have the 2020 Captain America and the Avengers set, and then I have both Gravity Feeds fully completed. For most sets in Modern, um, and by most sets, I mean just EarthX, I have a full Kerr, and then I have all the figures that have EarthX keyword, and those are like specific boxes, right, that I have. I have a box full of X-Men that probably has like 30 X-Men keywords in it, and then I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these little mini toolkits that all link together. Uh, little plastic holders that just stack and go up. I have seven of those filled with hero clicks. And obviously, it's a lot that can fit in each one. And I also have another one. So probably over a thousand for sure. And I think your average hero clicks player, if they've been playing for a long time, definitely has over a thousand. And that's probably. Uh, underestimating it. If I, if I went through and counted every single figure I owned, it's definitely over a thousand. I don't know. I don't want to quite say two thousand, but a lot of figures. It's a lot of figures. Yeah, but that's just kind of the name. That's the kind of the name of a collectible game, right? So, Simeon, what, what would you guesstimate what you got going on um, there? So, I don't tend to get rid of a ton of my stuff um, at a certain point commons uncommons and rares are all but worthless and so i'd just rather have them in case i might ever use them kind of situation uh but with that being said i've been collecting since let's see about 2014 2015 i've been playing since 2015 but then i've also gone back and grabbed some of like the golden age figures that i really wanted from before then so my only fully completed sets are Wolverine and the X-Men, Fear Itself, uh, Avengers Defenders War, which was probably a bad decision at the time. Uh, the Undead set was really fun. I at one point had a full set of the Mighty Thor, but it was just way too tempting to sell some of the pieces when they were really crazy high. Uh, the Xavier School, and just with like those alone... I'm sitting somewhere close to like 500 figures. Um, when you count in all the generics, I I don't have a full set of a lot of sets. I don't usually fill out the chase themes, but I usually end up getting most of the super rares. And then if you add in the generics and then you look at like HC realms to see how many figures were in the set, I probably have that many figures of the set, just not one of every single figure in the set. So I'm going to just roughly guesstimate probably close to like 1500 to 2000 figures 
And again, a lot of these are shelf pieces that I'll never use again. Uh, and even more of them are just generics from sets that I I really like generics. So like, even though I might never play the Amazing Spider-Man, uh, werewolves and vampires ever again, just the off chance that like there might someday be a battle where I need those, I'm gonna keep them. <laughs> so yeah, uh, <laughs> it gets it gets to be too many to count at some point and uh i'm definitely past that point right on i think a lot of people are and there are probably some heroes players that have been playing since the beginning or something and when we said you know a thousand or like whatever they they probably like scoffed like ha 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 you know like there are people and i know a few of them that like collect every hero click set you know when when the little booster says collect them all they do them and you're like whoa i'm just glad i wasn't playing back when the REV system was a thing. So I can be like, oh, man. oh I uh, I just have the common, uncommon, and rare Spider-Man from the set. I don't have to have, you know, the REV Spider-Man set. You know, even though it's basically the same thing, it just makes me feel slightly better that it's not like right. a one figure three times. So, Will, thank you so much for writing in. I hope that answers your question, my man. So make sure you go check out the new clicks on the block episode oh, that we also, have on youtube Podbean, iTunes. he also asked us uh tips for getting better so oh bef- sorry that's right yeah, yeah, yeah his little question yeah my bad here. sorry dude sorry um, bro i'm gonna throw out three quick things and they're quick for me to say they're not quick for you to do so learning your powers knowing which ones combine so the biggest thing here is knowing what capital close, lowercase close, capital range, lowercase range, knowing how these combine, knowing which powers are like the best combinations. So typically just the easiest one right off the bat is always going to be charge flurry. A figure that has charge flurry is the only thing in the game that has two standard powers. They're both speed powers, but they're two standard powers that lets you make two attacks. Typically that's not like a case. There's no combination of standard powers that give you two attacks other than charge flurry now of course like sidestep flurry would also be similar but uh charge flurry gives you like the highest movement with two attacks and there's a few things that like you know special powers can do the same thing but learn your powers learn which ones are best to combine and then as you're learning your powers positioning is huge so uh, if you were listening to this episode and you listen to Calder's future team and my future team, a lot of these teams synergy comes with good positioning. You have to have your empowers and your enhancements in the right spots to boost your damage. Uh, Calder's team had two people that have to be adjacent to give you plus one attacks. Skeets with the PD team ability can help you remove your opponent's defense or lower their defense um stuff like that just getting really good at positioning your figures uh keeping your leaderships close to where characters have actions uh carrying figures when you have somebody that can carry and then the real trick to getting good at this game and it's hard to really wrap your head around when you're starting out i don't really know a good way to to explain it other than you just kind of have to be in the game for a couple years. And that's the only way that I can really think of it. And that's figuring out the point system. So WizKids does not have a defined point system. A 50-point piece from one set, or even a 50-point piece from like the same set, but just a different 50-point piece, is not as good as a different 50-point piece. So you might have... The biggest example would be the Prime Vulture from Earth-X. He is 50 points. There's a lot of other 50-point pieces in that set that aren't nearly as good. Um, The non-Prime Vulture is also 50 points. He does almost nothing when compared to the Prime. It's just learning how figures are costed. And learning, like, when WizKids made, like, an oopsie and one figure is, like, way cheaper than they should be kind of thing. And that's less about getting better at the game and more about just, like, when it comes to team building, 
knowing what to look for, uh, knowing like when it's when it's okay to invest over a hundred points in a figure when like two fifty point figures might have better stats, that kind of thing. Right on. I think you said it probably better than I could have said it. So I think we're good to move on from there because no matter what, I think we really have to focus, especially for a new player, off the cuff, just knowing what all the powers do. I, I spent a lot of time, my little, what I would read before bed, you know, would be like the PAC, you know, learning all the powers and abilities. Like that was, that was huge. You know, the rule book itself is a daunting or more slightly more daunting task to read just because there's more, it's boring and gray and just like, yeah, boring to read, you know? Yeah. So that you need to read fully at least once, if not twice, I would say. Um, if you want to get really, really pounded out and whatever, you know, like, so if you don't want to show up to a tournament and sort of like look like you know what you're doing, you definitely need to understand how the powers work and how they interact. Just what you said, paying attention to capital, close capital range, etc. So I won't go much more into that. But yeah, reading the pack, reading the rule book, huge, absolutely huge. Next up, positioning. I think this is the hardest thing to learn in the game, uh, period. There's simple positioning, and then there's way more difficult positioning. Positioning is just hard. It is. It's difficult. It's You have to position your characters correctly so they work, maximizing the effectiveness together. And then you also have to look at how your positioning is in relative to your opponents. And positioning is the closest this game really gets to chess. And that is where maybe having, you know, a little bit of practice in chess helps because positioning is huge in this game. It really is. And it's, I think it's still the hardest thing uh, to understand for sure. And that's, that's what I would say. Focus on positioning and powers. And that is the best basis for your, for, for getting your start. But more importantly, getting better. Don't let the losses get you down more, more than anything. You're going to lose. When, when I played, I, I lost every game for the first like year I played this game, you know, and then eventually, you know, I, I would win a game against the guy that would beat me every time. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's, that feels really cool. Like, just don't, just don't give up. That, that's, that's what I would say. The biggest thing to getting better is not giving up. Yeah. You have to understand that there's, there's stumbling blocks. You know, it's, it's just the way it is when you try a new thing, you know, not everybody is crazy good at everything they try right away. So you just have to understand that there's going to be some losses and you should just have fun playing fun teams and lose with the fun team. You know, yeah. you just, I'd always rather lose with a fun team than win with like the best figures any day. Um, right. And that's just how, how I approach the game. If you actually want to get competitive, there's better resources than us because I just truly deep down in my heart, do not care about winning when it comes to this game. Uh, when it comes to most things, I just really don't care about winning that much. But when it comes to hero clicks, I just, I'm not willing to invest the time or money or anything into that. And so I can't give you an amazing opinion on like how to get truly competitive. And my only advice for getting into the competitive would be don't net deck right away. It's, Real yeah. easy to just take a team that has already won a few times and just like use that team and practice it, but that doesn't really give you an idea of like what makes that team good or how they built that team. So, coming up with your and it might take longer to like actually build a team that actually wins, but coming up with like your own stuff is always, in my opinion, just like way more rewarding uh, to do and. I mean, even if it takes like a couple years before you actually win at like a tournament or something with it, I just think that it's mm. it's a much more gratifying feeling to win with your own build than to take something else and just like hope that it's like the best pieces that there are to offer. Absolutely. Like what I was saying earlier with my cap squad, it was super rewarding seeing them do well playing all characters that I just love, right? That was big to me. So definitely more rewarding to play with just figures you like, figures you enjoy, and less net decking and worrying about whatever's crazy competitive or the hotness at the time. So I think though I think that's some really good points. Um and I think a lot of people can learn from that. So thank you, William, uh, for giving us the opportunity uh to speak on that by asking questions. Asking questions is always awesome. Um 
Speaking of questions, Malcolm sent in some questions. We're going to wait because it's their Halloween theme. We're going to wait to be a little bit closer to Halloween. It's coming up. It's spooky season. Don't get me wrong. So once we get a little closer to Halloween, we're going to make sure we answer those. The Jedi Legend Hero Clicks tip of the week. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. This week is perfect for the question we just got asked. Um, I, I saw a post on Facebook earlier this week about uh, crit hits, flurry, and super senses. That was, it was funny, but a lot of comments were like, sorry, bro, that's not how it works. So let's go into crit hits here and just a quick FAQ about how it works. All right, guys. So when you critically hit somebody, you become hit. So this supersedes wording like super senses, which is when you would be hit by an attack, you roll. You do not get a roll super senses at all because a crit hit is you become hit, period. So there is no super senses on a critical hit. Number two, yes, you become hit even with that unbeatably high, super high defense. If I crit hit you with a six attack and you have a 19, and that means I only hit an 18, right? I still hit you, period. You become hit. So that's that's the key wording there with critical hits. And number three is, yeah, it does knock back. So it's because it's doubles. Some people will forget this a lot of the time on a crit hit, but yeah, it's doubles. So in addition to dealing an extra damage, you get to knock them back uh, as many squares as damage dealt. Obviously, this does not supersede combat reflexes or charge, but make sure you're doing the knockback. A lot of people will actually just forget that and be like, oh, yeah, extra damage. But hey, you did roll doubles, so make sure you do the knockback. So a really good tip to keep in mind for critical hits. This all changed in 2017 which well what didn't right so right boom we got a, we had a sweet little crit hit uh one up uh little refresher course there for you guys so that is the show we had a great one sorry about the long spiel a little bit there guys uh, i just want to tell you really quickly check us out on twitter and on facebook dial h for hero clicks twitter it is with the four and not the f-o-r-e youtube this week we are dropping a huge huge video simeon is it was running his mouth a little bit earlier and i don't know how i feel about that so i'm gonna i'm gonna have a sit down conversation and see if we can work out our differences uh this friday the 23rd of october uh make sure you guys tune in our youtube channel for that it is some of the best probably for sure maybe not the best but the most unique hero clicks content you will see all year all right guys so make sure you check that out and that is all i have to say on the show so simeon you can say whatever you want we just out of here do whatever you got to do yeah, so if you want to be styling, profiling, limousine riding, jet flying, cool kind of guy like me, you can check out some of those expensive figures on CoolStuffInc.com. They've got all the latest Heroclix singles and sealed products, ranging from the super rares to the chases to the con LEs, none of that ribble rabble stuff that calder was mm. talking about those commons and uncommons you don't need any of that you just need the good stuff and you can get that at coolstuffinc.com happy trails <laughs>